Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. <clears throat> and today we have something very special and different for you. My guest is Stephanie Chubbuck, who is a glass sculptor. And she makes her works out of blown glass and fine metals and other materials. And uh, she's actually developed some interesting processes of her own that we're going to talk about today. And Stephanie, I want to thank you for being here. I'm a big fan of your work. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to mention to you that Stephanie is the recipient of the uh, Mass Cultural Council uh, grant for 2015. So congratulations on that. That's quite a big honor. <laughs> uh, no, I, that's really something uh, to be proud of. Um, so Stephanie went to uh, Mass College of Art yes. and majored in glass uh, and fine metals glass and fine metals. And do, did you always have an interest in that? Or how did you uh, get started in I the fine glass? Had, I always had an interest in sculpture, but I started in the industrial design department. Oh. Uh, yeah. And uh -huh. actually went up to about junior year before I just, it wasn't the best fit for me. Um, and I had been taking the studio classes right along in the glass department and the fine metals department. So changed to a double major in um, in those two departments and graduated um, in there. So then what really struck me too was that right after you graduated, you sort of hit the ground running and uh, did quite a bit of exhibiting. Uh, you were awarded a scholarship to the uh, Pilchuk School. In, that's out in um, Seattle, near it's, Seattle. It's, near Seattle. it's a mecca for glass artists from all over the world, and that must have been quite an experience. It was a to wonderful have experience. Time there. And then, as I say, from there you went on to quite a few exhibitions. I see that you, um, uh, in, you had a show at the Cape Cod Museum of Fine Arts in '95, the Women's Caucus for the Arts National Jury Show in '96. The Cordova Annual in 98, Arno Mu Art Museum in Elmira, New York, 99, just to mention a few. So she's been doing glass for quite a while. What I was curious about is how, did, how do you work with glass? In, you know, where do you find a studio? How, when you left school, what happened? It, everything came to a grinding halt. You're completely facility dependent. And when I was at Mass Art, we had this beautiful million dollar studio to work in. And um, as soon as you leave, you're sort of out in the cold. So you figure out ways um, to get things done. A lot of the work that I was making was um, in alternative materials, because I think I consider myself technically to be a mixed media artist, um, because I use other materials, but gl I've chosen glass um, in the service of looking a certain way. Um, so a lot of the work that I made when I graduated the decor of a show was made in latex. They were cast fruit then as well. Um, sort of anthropomorphic, hyper-realistic um, pears and peaches, but not all of it was made in glass. Um, so I was finding ways to get things done. Like my priority um, was right away to get art making space. Um, so I had a live workspace. And then how did you come back into the glass world? I never really left. It was just I wasn't producing a lot. Um, it's hard to, for, for me, um, to afford it. Uh, the studio time is very expensive. And so you rent time, you in, rent a time. in a hot shop. Correct. We're, now I'm in the process of building a studio. Um, we bought some property. In, out wow. in the woods, wow. yeah. Um, so I'll be building a hot shop, but still sort of spreading myself around. And um, glass blowing is a team sport, so it's a lot of fun to do it that way. Now, will you be taking people, uh, it, renting your space out to others? Then yes, absolutely, I see. absolutely. It's I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't, I, I would want them around. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because it's, as you say, it's camaraderie and team sport. Absolutely, it's a team sport. You we help my work, each other. It, it takes four people to make. The color process is, I, like, there's there's four of us in the, well, when we see this footage from yeah. Heathbrook, um, Robert Dane's studio, there's four of us working on them at any given time. But I love those people bring a lot um, to the process and it's, um, it's nice to have that kind of support and they're they're all really talented and artists in their own right and it's a joy to be around them. I can imagine it's really complicated and difficult and everybody has to know what they're doing. Now yeah. you were a resident at the Craft Center for here in Worcester for a while yes. too. Yeah. When was that? Uh, 2013 to 2014 I did one year at the Craft Center. Uh-huh. And how is that something that's uh, available to people in the it area? It is. It is. Um, the residents usually teach classes. Um, so the residency program is primarily for people that have a fine arts degree, um, but they have a variety of classes that mm -hmm. are available in mm -hmm. a lot of mediums. Mm -hmm. um, to there's workshops. There's some fantastic metals workshops. There's and three how, hour workshops in the glass and how program. is their glass? Oh, they have three hour workshops yeah. that where an individual can just come in as a greenhorn. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well they, they have and, wonderful instructors. And yeah. how is their studio space? It's big. It's very large. Um, Isn't that good to know if you're a local person that you can actually get your hands on it in, at the Worcester Craft Center? Well, let's, uh, let's go on out and uh, see what happens at the uh, Heath Brooks Studio in uh, Western Mass. Sure. Well, this is a lovely studio. It's so big and airy. So it's Robert Dane's studio in Heath, Mass. Yes, Robert Dane has been here for 35 years and has put a lot of time into making it um, very, very well appointed. And this is your team? This is Orion Becker, yes. He's our little renaissance man. He's good at everything. He does um, lamp working as well as furnace glass. And what is he doing here? He's picking up some of the frit, some of the color, one of the color layers that goes into the cherries. So that's actually ground up glass? Yes. This is a glass bar. Um, we also use bar color, so it's a solid layer and granulated glass. Now, the do you mix the colors yourself? Yes. Or? Oh, wow. They, they, they come as set colors, but we create... Um, we create some custom combinations. Yeah, some yeah. This is Krista Silfaro on the bench. She's our gaffer, um, an outstanding sculptor and um, glass engineer, actually. This is Nicholas Winkler. He's gathering some clear glass out of the furnace. So it's just a big tub of clear it, molten glass in there. Yes. 2,000 degrees. Woo! When you open the door, it hits you like a wall. Now he's putting the clear glass on top of your colored core, is that correct? Yes. And uh, that way you get that warm, radiant color inside. Yes, you see through one color to another. Here's Orion making a bigger gather. We so, put layers of clear in between the layers of color. So each time you pick up clear, then you go back and get more free. Get more color, yeah. And of course, they have to keep the, the pipe cool so that you can touch it. Yes. And this is called the glory hole? That's a glory <laughs> hole. It's for reheating. Oh. As you as When you take the glass out, it cools. And as you touch it with tools, it cools. Um, and you need to go back to soften it. And everything has to be done so quickly because if you don't keep it moving, and you notice how they have to keep rolling the ball or else it'll droop, right? Yes, you work on center, um, so you keep it turning. You're constantly turning that uh, tube. And of course, you, that you blow through that as well, right? Yes. All right, so you have a little colored core there. Look at the way those props keep you from bumping the side of the furnace or anything. Yeah, well, it would be cantilevered, so it's a, um, uh -huh. it's yeah. a support. Now, point. this is the bin where you have colored glass tubes in there? Those, yes, that's the bar color, and it's pre-warmed to 1,000 degrees. Okay. 
This is a pipe warmer. Oh, look, there's our lunch. Those oh. two tin foil. That's, that's the quiche. Yay, We're warming Stephanie, up for lunch. Two quiches <laughs> <laughs> on the pipe warmer. So the pipes have to be a certain temperature to pick up the, the glass properly. The pipes also have to be hot. Yes. Yeah. And then here, Krista Krista's rolling a bigger ball, I suppose. Yep, when it comes out, you'll see that. Look at the rocker, the way that thing just slides out so beautifully. This is me bringing Nick a color drop. So you're it's putting... another layer of, of solid color that gets spread on the bubble. Ah, so the darker red is a bubble? Uh, there's a bubble on inside. Yeah? Yeah. But the part on the top doesn't have any air in it yet. No, it'll it'll spread around. Okay, um, it'll be spread around the other. So you part. notice it drooping in that intense heat. How the ball is is just so hot. It's so liquid. It has to constantly be rotated. And what's the temperature in there again? About twenty two hundred degrees. Wow. I can't imagine that you don't bump into each other. <laughs> to pay attention and now Krista Krista's shaping the outside of a cherry she's closing down the neck and of course this is red hot yes it's um well we're, well Ryan's now going to go back and heat it up again but you see how the glass is glowing it's actually hot enough at this point to be radiating its own light wow and it's lighting that board on fire yep the tools are kept they're, they're either made out of steel or the wooden tools are kept wet. Now you were saying that, why is, does he do this now? Um, that little pipe, it's to keep the, the hole from completely closing. She pulls it in. Because if the clo hole closed, when they put it back in the oven, it would burst. Yeah, it would. It would um, the it air would inside it would, would burst yes. the bubble. And you were saying Krista's really a fabulous sculptor. Yeah, she's an amazing, nobody sculpts like Krista. Look at the, she look is, at the I'm shape. I'm such a fan, yeah. I have such respect for her. You know what repeals to me the fact that it's not a perfect geometric symmetry. It's organic, the shape is natural, like a, like a cherry. It, well, you know, that, it, it has the growth pattern rather than a, yeah. a mathematical symmetry. And that, um, that form is something that Krista and I have worked together on for a long time, and she knows exactly how to make it happen, and, and the, the detail of it is really oh, important. Oh, now do you see she just tapped that right off? Yep, it and comes off, and Orion's wearing a protective gear to put it away in the annealer. And this is going on rapidly, like one person, you're working on the color insides now while they're doing this part, so everyone has a job, and everyone, knows exactly what they have to do next, and it, it's very synchronized so that you're never left standing there holding the red ball. No, no. <laughs> you need your teammates. Wow. It's one of the benefits of working with the same people. And, and uh, all the time. Orion blows into the end of that while she's rolling that. Sometimes, too. yeah. yeah. Here, he's going to catch it. Now watch. They're cutting off the neck and separating it just with one tap. And then he, he needs that big protective suit and has to toss that in the air so it doesn't settle according to his hands, right? Yep, and I'll get the door and for And then him. what's this big thing? This is an annealer and it holds the, um, it holds the glass at 950 degrees. And the purpose of that um, is so that the, the molecules realign because they're scrambled when the glass is molten, and um, we hold it at, at a annealing temperature for a certain number of hours so that those things can realign and they'll be organized and it won't fracture as it comes down to room Because if you just took it out of the hot furnace and let it air dry, it would burst? Yeah, well, it would, it would fracture. Yeah. yeah. Here you can really see that beautiful asymmetrical, sh that unusual shape. And if, of course, that's red because of, it's red hot. It's hot. Now, you were saying when it starts to cool, it gets blacker. It gets then, darker, yes. But then it, it, it dries brighter again? When um, it comes out of the annealer, the color develops. Yeah. Now, what's she doing now? She's flattening the bottom so that we have... So it, it'll stand. Yeah. Yeah.
and he's keeping the mouth open. Mm -hmm. As she pulls in, he he's moving the uh, the little rod so that it doesn't completely shut. I love, and off. then cracking it off. Yep. Now she's going to put it back in. Do they and ever we'll blow it when it's in the furnace? No. No, you blow it when no. it comes out. Yeah, not as part of our process. There uh -huh. might be that. There might be a purpose. Yeah. Look how black it is now. Back into the glory hole. On the roller. So. Uh, Orion really has to have extremely protective clothing on to handle that. How hot is the cherry at this point? Uh, maybe about 1,400 degrees. Wow, wow. And those it's gloves will do it? It's cooling down quickly. Those, yeah, they're a very thick Kevlar. Huh. But it, it, you, the heat still transfers. That's why he sort of juggles it yes. on the way over to the oh, annealer. Oh, it's also to keep, for the heat. Do, yeah. yeah. The, the gloves will still burn. You're not completely... Then protected. those little pads she was uh, shaping it with are actually just, he said, made out of newspaper. And they wet the newspaper. Now look at how he has to lean into that annealer. Oh, my word. His eyebrows would be gone. Yeah, <laughs> at least. So the team succeeds again. <laughs> <laughs> and here they are. Here they are. Hi, Mom. So that's yes. Nick... And Krista and Orion, and I'm on the far left. Good job. But yeah, I'm so. Well, that was a great experience out at the Heathbrook studio. And uh, now, what I'd like to do is show the audience some of the work that you've made over the years. Oh. And uh, I see this one has a zipper on it. Is that a real zipper that you. It is a real zipper. Buy at the sewing store? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're real YKK zippers with. <laughs> And so these are blown in the glass studio, mm -hmm. the hot shop, and I see they're hollow. Yes. And uh, tell what else can you tell us about these? Um, it, they're it's they're made in a couple of phases. We have that we we make the form in the hot shop, and then there's um, a secondary process where um, the the glass is ground away. Um, I do the it, exterior. The exterior to to make the cuts um, in them and to set the zipper in. And so, do you do lose like a Dremel tool or something to Absolutely, cut into? Absolutely. Yep. It? It's yep, like it's it. like doing lapidary um, or dental tools. I use a lot of diamond now, dental tools. Now, here's something that intrigued me. The glass has this natural curvature when you blow it. Mm -hmm. The zipper seems to bend slightly. Mm -hmm. Is that with the curve of the glass, or it is. is that it is. It is. There, um, I cut the surface away. I don't just make the hole, yes. but I grind. Um, I grind out a, a place for the zipper to yes. be, um, so that it. It's important to me that it looks like it's part of the surface, and that mm -hmm. it looks like it could actually function when mm -hmm. it's and the it glass looks like is rigid, it could actually it close. Right. It um, looks like it could to actually create close. the illusion. Yes. Um, so that's an important part of uh, to 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 make the the materials that don't necessarily go together look as if they belong together. Now this has a much different surface. That's right, that's the flesh tone surface. These are all um, layered opaque colors, um, but they're in semi-opaques and they're put into layer upon layer of clear glass. And it's really wow. important to me that they be really well made because if you've enticed oh, the that person. Is, the craftsmanship is, is unbelievable. but. What strikes me so is such magic is the way that craftsmanship and the choice of materials and the way you make the surfaces and that's what makes the meaning. Yeah. You know, it's it's like this is so fleshy. It's like a bum, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, but it's all it, you know in the feminine uh, metaphor and. It, it's just so uh, so evocative of so many different ideas. Well, I try to ride the fence on a lot of those yeah. things. Yeah, it's and not, not too obvious, which is good. No, no, I wouldn't want I I wouldn't want them to be vulgar. No. I wouldn't want no, no. It to, I wouldn't want to feel like no. I had to not show it yes. to children. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. And there's a lot of it, it's really important that you kind of bring your own opinions and yes. your own. 
and your own history and your emotional yes. history to, to looking at things like that that are maybe evocative. Um, yes. And that it not, I make it a point to make sure that there isn't um, my strong opinion in it because mm -hmm. then you lose the viewer's mm -hmm. opinion yes. and those things it's are important open. too. It's open. It is open and there, it's, it's, about, it's about duality too. Yes. So why, yes. but with duality, why can't it be both of those things? Yes. And, and when you're talking about polar opposites, they could both be true and the sum of those two things mm -hmm. together is is much more yes. than either oh, actually on their own. Let's go to another one because I want the audience to get a chance to see lots of them. Oh, look at this one, the black cherry. But, you know, the idea too is that, but I'm trying to go back onto the idea of how the visual, the materials themselves express the concepts and feelings. Mm -hmm. Like this one, you just, it's so lusciously juicy and red and yeah. it's the shininess and the color yeah. that do that. Yeah, well, so, that is a trigger yeah. for sure. And then that mysterious interior. Let's go to another one. This is oh, a close-up close of that up of surface yeah. of the garnet. Look at the look at the work the work that must go into polishing that is incredible. Well the, the surface it comes out of the that glassy glass surface, it comes out of the furnace that way. These have um, a diamond set into the a lab grown diamond set into the tips of the stem. Really? Are the stems made of glass? The stems these stems are made out of um, forged bronze. I was wondering about that because I thought, oh my the fragility God, of can that. they possibly be glass? So this is com combining the metals yeah, again. Yeah, th this is the, the fine mixed metals. media. So, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Are all thing. of these zippered or just that one? Just the one. There's just now, one. Now you see how that could change the meaning though, just having one with the zipper? Let's go to, the, yeah. In position, in size, the gesture of the stem makes a big difference. And are some meant to be seen lying on their side? Some, like that? yeah. They're, it's well, they're um, different areas of them are flattened, so because ah. it makes a big difference so to the you, gesture. So they settle. So yeah, they sit. Properly. Right. We, yes. we usually um, I'll pick a flat spot in the studio. Well, it's like still I warm. want. Yeah. To, it, it will. Okay, this one's going to sit this way, and then yes. that's dependent. Like some so of it develops. So that's your aesthetic choice, right? While it's hot, mm -hmm. I got it. Yep. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's a much different zip. Yep, and a different color. Uh huh. The yeah. gesture. Yes, yes, um, yes. The gesture of the cuts, like I work. Um, that uh, those are compositional choices too, and mm -hmm. that's secondary mm -hmm. to the to the hot shop. And I have a lot more time to make those. Decisions. Well, even there, this is a small point. But if the angle of the zipper lined up exactly with the angle of the of the stem, sometimes might not be as. But this gives you a little detour before. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, bends yeah. off to the side. Sometimes that's a line that I want to continue yes. when I'm making the choices of um, how it's seen, of where I, I yes. make that cut. Sometimes it's based on the outside shape. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's based on where the stem is and, yes. and how I bent the stem. Um, so they sort of that's a detail shot. Oh, that's the, the that's the, the tip of the, the little set. teeny tiny stem. Mm -hmm. Wow. Beautiful. And then of course there's the relationship even male female. Absolutely. You know you could think about with so the number makes a big difference too when you How see many? one or there's a pink one a pink one yeah oh. happy mistake it was a colored that it's didn't a different develop. it's a different species of cherry yeah. <laughs> they they exist but it, even there though it throws other possibilities of different meanings yeah. of something being different. maybe maybe being more immature or young mm -hmm. or not innocent ripe or, or ripe. not ripe or go ahead oh. These are the pair. These are very large. They're um, wow. They're about they twenty-two. Are? These well, they're they've gotten larger mm -hmm. recently because we've gotten better. <laughs> I imagine glass. larger is a lot harder than the, smaller. Yeah, it's what? heavy. <laughs> the smaller ones are, are actually pretty fast. Um, the larger ones, it's about. It's it's over an hour of shop and time. Do you realize time how weird people, it is is actually to see the scale of that pair? in such a large scale. Even that suggests some kind of magic or mystery or, but um, 
Uh, go ahead. Let's go to another. I think well, it we're starts to talk about things like giganticism, and they're, they're, they become, in the larger size, they're not um, little fruit still lives anymore. They become um, more literally, perhaps, body parts. Yes. Um, or bodies, they, they, you know, we, the gesture of how they sit, how they sit up, how mm -hmm. they recline, if they have a sort of sinister laziness to them, mm -hmm. if they're, there's a lot that you can do with how you position them and how you balance them. Yes. Um, and it's 100%. Wow, that one's like a gaping mouth. Well, that was one of the first cherries. Really? That, yeah. But I like the way this cluster works, too. You know, again, there's kind of a community about this group. Yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. Th there's a I'm conversation. I'm afraid we're going to have to spin um, to the end because we're running out of time. These are real scale. These are small. Life size. Correct. Oh, beautiful. And what type of zipper we choose? Oh, let's, uh, I just want to show them, uh, now are these some these of the latex pieces? One. That These are early glass pieces. I see. They're very early. And there's a big difference in the color, there's a big okay. difference in the photography. I think we have to call it quits there if we want to have time for uh, <laughs> showing the, you want. The, the studio work. Sure, whatever you want. Uh, so I just wanted to mention your website which is just your name? It's www.stephaniechubbick.com. Okay, and your studio, uh, your new hot shop will be where? It's in Heath, Massachusetts. It's uh, Robert Dane's uh, studio. He's been there for 35 years, and it's called Heath Brooks Studio. And your place, though, is, is going in, to be? Oh, is going to be probably called Bellfire Studio, thanks to Mrs. Hayes. And this is her private glass <laughs> studio, be, which yeah. will be open for business about when? Oh, it's a, it's a few years out. Princeton few years is difficult. Out, but it'll be in Princeton, Mass., so watch for it. Uh, Stephanie Chubbick's Glass Hot Shop in Princeton, Mass. So I'm afraid we're going to have to stop there, but I really enjoyed seeing your work. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very and, much. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. And I hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas.